everybody. Welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. And today we're in the Ruta 379 and we've got our Ice Mountain spring water or natural water skin on here. Uh, it's a new skin. I've, well, actually I made it probably a month and a half ago and uh, well, I almost forgot about it. And uh, Recon did this trip on his Sunday um, oh, uh, live stream. And so I quickly uh, got the trailer skin over to him, but uh, I thought, well, maybe I better throw this on here and, and do that trip because it's a lot of fun. So what we got here, I'll show you the map. We're loaded here. Uh, here's the East Glacier. Here's the Beta, the new road. And we're supposed to leave here, go this way all the way around, down to um, uh, USBB in Great Falls. But I think we're going to go this way, cut across here and go down and yeah, let's try that. See how that works out. It'll be shorter, but I don't think we can, we can't do this with the map thing because it doesn't recognize this piece of road that comes out of here. So that won't work. So what we can do, well, we can't do anything about it. We're going to have to just ignore the voice nav when we get lost over here. So, what we'll do, I think what I'll do, we're going to run in, I'm going to turn the voice nav off right now, and we'll come back and turn it on once we get, um, once we get past there. So we'll go, we got Sarah 3 on. Let's select, not selected, okay, good. So we don't have to listen to them tell us we're going the wrong way. And so let's hop in. And we're going to go... Uh, we're going to go left instead of right then. So let's uh, do that. Get the brakes off. Hop in. Put her in gear. That helps. Yeah, let's roll. What do we got on? 50,700 pounds. I wonder if we need to put the... You know what? Let's put the diff lock on now because we've got a pretty steep hill ahead of us. Got a C15 MBN in here. Just for a change. Oh boy, we'll be shifting down early here. Uh oh. It's real important when you're going uphill to start your downshift way earlier than you think you, you need to because the truck's going to slow down a whole lot going uphill. So it's going to take you a lot longer a lot more RPM is going to drop off before you get it into that next gear or the next lower gear. To get a watch not shifting too soon, you got to wait till your trailer comes up over the rise too, or be prepared for a real short, uh, slow shift, or if you're going up through the gears, a really fast shift. You'll have to shift much faster going up uh, because you don't have the leisurely pace to go through the gear waiting for your 300 or 150 RPM if you're doing a split or straight straight gear. Full gear, I call it. We're just going to leave that diff lock on until we we're going to turn left at the bottom of the hill here.
So this is a, uh, not a uh, hidden road, it's a secret road. It's not going to be one that you drive on and shows up on the map all of a sudden. So I've driven on it before and you can see in the GPS up by the CB, there's no road showing. So that's just the way it's going to be. 6.25 in the morning. So this is a work in progress through here, of course. for fuel anyway. Oh, we got lots of range. About 215 gallons on board. Good shape. We can get fuel up on top of the mountain anyway. If we had to. I believe we could get it right here too. The site that's going into our right or straight ahead now. I can see a fuel icon on the map. Uh, it's okay, so diff lock's on. Get a little speed, but you don't want to get up too far, too much speed, up too many gears, because you're just going to have to shift them all down here right away. That's going to be an optimal climbing speed for the truck that it'll be able to go. at the bottom of this we're going to go down a full gear and I got my splitter ahead so we got a split back that we can do without too much drama if we get into trouble here so I will stand on it and see what happens this isn't too bad here It's 1800 RPM, kind of high, but I don't want to risk a movement of the stick here. We just rely on our little half gear here if we need it. Oh, crap, I hit the snowbank pretty hard. Wow, gotta hate it when that happens. So full shift. Splitter still ahead. We're gonna go down that shift right here, slow down a bit. So we don't over rev the engine. Try not hit the bank again. I hit the, I hit the, plunked it right into the bank. Oh, well, that's weird. We don't seem to hit anything. Uh, I'll be horn swoggled. Okay, parking brake, low. That was weird. Real weird. Yeah, I couldn't get those shifts done fast enough. Ah. Nope. 
Maybe we can take off in third low. Get a little bit more forward speed, we should be good. Nope. There we go. Now we're cooking. Yeah, you really gotta shift quick when you're going uphill. I was going too slow there. Up this kind of hill. Like, you do have to adjust even on the highway on a semi steep, steepish hill. Alright. Off and running. We got this great view out here. Wow, look at that. I gotta uh, take a photo here. Just bear with me for a sec, okay? Okay, got our photo. And there's the fuel, if you need it. This corner is real tricky. I'm gonna try and not hit the bank and be inside the truck. But let's see how we do. It's kind of blind. You don't know where you're steering. There we did it. <laughs> Yay. Yay us. Now, there's another one where you can do a lot of damage to the truck. We already got 3% on it, so, oh, there goes the trailer up. Dang, I was trying to stay off the curb at the front. Oh, we got it at both ends. Okay, let's see if we can increase the steering angle. Yeah, it's this bit of a long combination, I guess, for this uh, road. Oh, that's unfortunate. I guess I should have grabbed a shorter chassis. Well, it's a great day out there, too. Okay, well there goes the snow. I don't think we're gonna, let's see if we can unlock the diff here. Yep. lock it back up before we take that dastardly corner down by the trestle bridge down below us here. Maybe we'll see the trestle uh, bridge in the next switch back. put it over on its lid there. Okay, and we're, <laughs> see how we're stopped. We're going to put the diff lock on again. This is one of those hills, sir. You don't want to go at it too fast because you get you don't want to make too many downshifts here. So we're gonna just do one downshift. Get slowed down right now. Got the diff lock on. Got one split back on deck here. If we need it. No, it doesn't look like we're gonna need it. Oh, we'll try and not fall through the bridge. Oh, oh boy. 
Yeah, recon says uh, non-collision zone in the middle of the bridge, that gap, so you will go through it. Here's our final challenge. up there somewhere. There we go. Lock the diff. Boy, oh boy. Wow, that's a, that's a, um, a challenge, that road. So, of course, this is all, as I say, a work in progress. But something's going to happen down this road here. Not 100% sure what. Recon's got a few ideas, but uh, I'll leave it to him <laughs> to announce it. Don't want to put uh, words in his mouth there. Promise things that get changed. So much work going on on the map right now with Recon and Driver 47. And uh, I guess the one thing Recon's worried about is what happens when the new game engine drops. Does everything they've done so far break and they have to redo all of it? So that represents a huge amount of work, if that's the case. And, uh, boy, I sure hope that doesn't happen, that the new game doesn't break it. The new uh, game engine. So by game engine, you know, that means the platform that the game runs on. Like this whole structure, everything we're doing here, all my switches, the shifting, the driving, the whole thing is uh, platformed. So it's a whole bunch of code and stuff written out by guys and plunked onto this platform to run it. And um, it's old. It doesn't perform very well. It's it's kind of like uh, holding back the what we see in terms of quality and ability of the newer hardware to actually run the game, take advantage of the power that the new uh, computers have. And I don't mean brand new, I mean computers three and four years old, maybe more, five years old. Because when this game came out, it was kind of written to a very base computer at that time, which was a single core computer. What that means, like a single core computer has one active sort of brain in the chip, let's call it. And so he's doing all the work. He doesn't have buddies he can hand it off to. And nowadays, most chips are gonna have four, six, eight, 16 buddies all working together, putting their brain together so the one guy's not overloaded. And you get a lot better results because we don't have all these stutters and lag and low frame rate. And uh, should check your hardware and see what how many cores your your CPU has. There's a little uh, app you can download. It's called CPU dash Z or Z. Say CPU dash Z. Download that little app, run it, and it'll tell you everything you want to know about your computer. Just put a little icon on your desk. Whoops. Put a little icon on your desktop. And um, you can check your memory. You can see how your memory is working. If it's running at the speed it's supposed to, or do you have to make an adjustment? Uh, I'll tell you what your motherboard specs are, your monitor, your graphics card, your CPU. Handy little tool. CPU dash Z. Just Google that and run it. See if you're going to be ready. 
and then look up the specs uh, for the for the game the, those new uh, requirements spec requirements or whatever the heck you want to call it that they put out well that was uh, kind of a short trip but uh, we're not done yet we still got to wind our way into this USB B. It's uh, something else. Oh, we have a Montana Express. Oh, it's at a Great Falls right in front of us. Looks like he might be home for supper tonight. Unless they send him out again right away. Oh, he's turning right. Whatever that's going to take him. Well, it's not back on the highway anyway. He's in town. He can do his delivery and go home and see the wife and kids. Lucky man. Yeah, it's a thing when when I blew my back up the second time and had to get out of driving. It was. Uh, Boy, let's see, six months, well, five months really before the birth of my first child. So I never did have that being away, missing the kids kind of thing, or hopefully them missing you. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I kind of look at that as a bit of a blessing in a way. when the first one was born I was recovering from back surgery but um, it was all okay you know a healthy thriving child that fixes a lot of wrongs in your life you know oh boy I gotta get all mushy let's change the subject 148.5 how about that for a subject change going to be interesting to see what's going on there. I did read up a little bit on it, like I said I was going to, but I, I'd have to uh, take notes to really tell you the, the full story, but looks like it's, once again, updates to the game engine for the next DLC, but there's something hinky going on there they're not saying, but I think it's got a lot to do with uh, the new game engine as well, because we're going to go from 148 to 148.5, which will be a beta, and then 148.5 will go out of beta, be fully on 148.5. And from there, my understanding is they're going to go to 149 with no 149 beta. That's all going to be taken care of in 148.5. So that's different. And that makes me you know, wonder. Okay, so here's where we're going. USB B in there. And we're going to go under the highway we were just on once and twice coming back this way it's kind of weird it's cool actually take advantage of this industrial space down in the river valley here maybe you don't have houses down here because it's prone to flooding who knows be a crazy place to put your business though if that's the case too so on this skin Okay, so let's talk about that. It's Bart's uh, Walker food grade tanker, and the skin on the truck on the trailer is in the truck skin. Okay, you got that. So if you got this skin, this Ruta 379 389 skin, when I put it on Steam, you go to the trailer, and right about in the middle, front, right on the side, will be uh, one of those nodes 
you click on the node and you pick custom paint job 2 and it'll put this on the trailer that's how that works and you don't need obviously you need the trailer mod but you don't need to use his customer file because the part of the customer file that puts this paint job on the truck is in the truck paint job so that's kind of handy and if you have the North Coast wine skin I did for Rudis 379 then it, it'll still work because it's custom one paint job oh where are we going here I forgot the map what's it say oh it looks like all the way around okay Yeah, so, and then the other thing to know is, I guess, this paint job is, it's not difficult. Uh, it's, I put everything on the door and the sill, so that it could go on pretty much anything. So, if there's a particular, okay, we're right in against the building. The best way to tackle this is, I have to do a little do si do here. Wish I had room. Gotta turn as close to everything as we can. Might have to do another do si do when we get to that trailer, but I don't want to jackknife the uh, trailer too hard. Yeah, we got a long chassis truck here, so okay, let's straighten it out a bit. We're gonna just come in a little wider here again. Maybe we'll try and miss that box up there this time and just skim the front of that trailer. See if we can do that. No. Got another do si -do in our future. Oh, let's dump duck in here. Oh, the box has moved. Look at that. <laughs> I, sometimes you see these things and you bump into them and they're it's like a solid object. Well, they move. Oh, isn't that cool? Yeah, we're going to have to just go hard on the trailer here. Just do a U-turn. No way around it. Let's see how uh, what we can do. I don't like to go over 90 degrees with the trailer and the truck. That's hard on equipment. Tires too. Well, I guess tires first of all. But let's see. We should be able to do this at less than 90. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That'll keep the maintenance shop happy. Now what's in front of us out here? Oh, dude watching. Great. Nothing to see here, folks. Move along. <laughs> oh, boy. So Recon was talking about turning this... Uh, Oh, gee, I shouldn't. Hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but I was thinking about making this prefab into a big uh, milk uh, producing plant. So we're going to have to do a, a pull up over here anyway, but we'll get it back somewhere in the neighborhood here. I wonder what the length of this trailer is. Looks like a 48. It's not a 53, but I'm trying to envision it as a 45 and think of it as two turnpike, like a turnpike double. It's 245, so I don't see it. I'm thinking 48 foot. 
Well, we could probably check the specs if we were went in pretended we were buying a trailer. I got ourselves tucked in too far. Look at that. Oh no, that would work. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to a milk plant, but uh, I've been to a few. And uh, like Recon was saying in his uh, live stream, he'd make a bay where you back inside because they don't unload milk outside, or at least not here. Probably not in the U.S. either. I'm in Canada, of course. But um, you you go inside a building, you drive inside, and it's all done in control conditions. Oh, that was a bit of a finag one. But we did it. And on time. <laughs> just, just by our best efforts. Just 173 miles. But boy, it's a lot of money for 173 miles. That water is... That's like liquid gold. So here we'll have a little look at what I put on the side of the truck. So what I did is I went to the um, uh, US DOT. You can go to the, the website for the uh, DOT website and you can look companies up. So I just looked up Nestle and it was called Nestle, oh boy, oh nutritious foods. I can't remember. Anyway, so I just shortened it down to uh, Nestle USA but that's their address and that's their US dot. So that's legit right off of their, uh, right off the US DOT site. So if you're doing skins and stuff and you want to get the actual goods on, on the skin you're doing, you can do that. Just look up the U US DOT. And if you're making up a number, you can search a number that you've made up to make sure it's not somebody else's company. If you, you know, so I've done that too, because when I do my made up ones, I, um, I just check to make sure I'm not, you know, going to take somebody's U.S. dot number and and uh, when I shouldn't. Anyway, so that's going to go up on Steam fairly soon. Probably be up on Steam before you get the uh, video. So once again, that skin is in the, this skin. And, oh, let's show you where on the trailer. Let's go up. And, you know, those nodes on the trailer where you select things. Right about, yeah, you know, right about there. There's a node on the trailer, and that's where you get the paint, and it's custom too. So in the skin, I'll put that in the description of the skin. But anyway, that's just so you know. And uh, yeah, works on all cabs, 379, 389. And if you're interested in seeing this on other trucks, let me know, because once again, I made it easy to transfer truck to truck so we can put this one on a lot of trucks it's not a design it's just info so um take care guys we'll catch you on the next one and uh bye for now